Okay, 7-2, dividing monomials. We worked with um, multiplying monomials the other day, and so now we're going to divide them. Uh, biggest differences are we're going to, instead of adding and multiplying the exponents, um, we're going to be some, we're going to do some dividing. And there may actually be some multiplying. We may have to do some powers to a power and then do our division, but we'll get to those in just a minute. So very basically, if I take g to the third power, h to the fifth power, and I divide that by g h squared. Okay, I'm going to show you two different methods to do this. That way you can learn the, the basis of why it happens. When I have g to the third power, that means g times g times g. And then I have h to the fifth power. This will take me just a second. So that's really g to the third power, h to the fifth, just written out the long way. And then on the bottom, I've got a single g, and then I've got an h squared. So that means two of them. And so in fractions, when I have something top and bottom that's common, they can cancel. So I can cancel a g on the top, cancel a g on the bottom, cancel two h's on the top, two h's on the bottom. So what I have at this point is I have two g's, which is g squared on top. Then I have three h's, which is h cubed. And then on the bottom, everything is canceled out, so that's just 1. So I could put that over 1, but I'm just going to leave it g squared h to the third. Now, here's how we can do it without writing it out longhand. Okay, so we've got g to the third. I'm just rewriting the problem. This is one of those, for those of you who... Um, who like to put your little subscript ones above your g's because that's g to the first power, that would be a good thing. Okay, so I'm dividing. It's top and bottom. looks like a fraction. So what I want to do is I want to combine the ones that are like bases. So let's look at the g's. I have g to the third on top and g to the first on bottom. So in division, I'm going to subtract the exponents. So 3 minus 1 gives me g squared. And then I go over to the h's and 5 minus 2 is h to the third. So very basic. Again, same answer as we came up with up here. I just wanted to show you the basis of that. OK, let's take it one step further. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of multiplication and division. The first thing I need to see is I need to know what is being taken to the second power. So everything inside that parentheses is being taken to the second power. So I'm going to rewrite this as parentheses 3p cubed to the second power over 7 to the second power because the 7 is being taken as well. So I know 7 squared is 49. So in my next step, I'm going to go with 49. Okay. Now I look up to the top. And this is power to a power. Okay, so um, I'm going to take uh, 3 to the second power, which is going to give me 9. And now p to the third power raised to the second power, because there is not a variable here, I'm going to multiply those. So that's going to be 9p to the sixth. So I have 9p to the sixth over 49. Now, at this point, if I could reduce anything, I would. If there was something that went into 3, or excuse me, something that went into 9 and into 49, I would reduce it. So I'm looking for 3s, 9s, and none of those seem to be the case. So that's going to be where I end with 9p over 6, excuse me, 9p to the 6th power over 49. Okay, my next example has to do with the power of zero. Well, I want to take I want to take a full page on this one. Okay, the power of zero. Okay, 
anything raised to the zero power is one. Okay, so if I have six to the zero power, that's one. If I have x to the zero power, that's one. If I have one sixth x to the zero power, that's one. Now, someone asked yesterday in class, well, why? Well, let's use the, um, uh, the rules that we know already. Let's say I have, uh, let's say I have x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth. Okay? And simple division, we know that anything divided by itself is what? Okay, anything divided by itself is 1. So how can we use this in our property of zeros? Well, we know with division, what we do with our exponents is we subtract them. So this is going to be x to the 5 minus 5. And obviously, 5 minus 5 is 0. So x to the 0 power is 1. Again, same answer. Okay, that's just a little, a little proof of it. So anything in the work today, uh, if it's raised to a zero power, just substitute one in for it. Okay, let's look at a negative exponent. Um, I've got 8x to the fourth divided by 2x to the eighth. I'm going to go ahead and divide the eight in the two. So eight divided by two is four. And I know I'm going to have a base of x, so I'm going to go ahead and put my x there. Now, according to the rule, I subtract my exponents. So 4 minus 8 is going to give me negative 4. Now, here's the problem. There's no such thing as a negative exponent. So I have to change that negative exponent into a positive exponent. So watch what happens. If I had x to the fourth on the top, which is what I had, and then on the bottom, just a minute on this one. That's x to the eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. And so my rules of, of fractions would say I could cancel these four. Now where is my x to the fourth? My x to the fourth is on the bottom. So the rule for negative exponents is, is I'm going to take the reciprocal or I'm going to flip the exponent and the variable that it's connected to, and I'm going to flip it to the bottom. So I'm going to end up with 4 over x to the fourth. Okay, again over here, my x to the fourth was on the denominator. Now, what if your negative exponent is on the bottom? If your negative exponent is on the bottom, then you flip it to the top which we're going to see in just a moment on another problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. 5r to the negative 3, t to the 4th, over negative 20r squared, t to the 7th, u to the negative 5th. This is a jumbled mess. But knowing the rules, we can take care of this very easily. So let's look at the numbers. Um, we've got a positive divided by a negative. So we know our answer is going to be negative. And what is 5 over 20? 5 over 20 reduces to 1 fourth. Okay, so right now we've got negative 1 fourth and we're done with the numbers. Now, let's look at the R's and let's take them out separately. We have negative 3 minus 2. Negative 3 minus 2 is going to be negative 5. Now we'll take care of that in just a minute. Now let's look at our t's. We have t to the fourth over t to the seventh. So that's going to be t to the four minus seven, which is t to the negative three. Okay. And now, um, I, I don't like the way I wrote this. Okay, let's change the way this looks. And let's put the 4 like that. There we go. 
Okay, now my u to the negative 5, I don't think I have, I don't have anything on top to combine it with. So it has to stay on the bottom. And so all three, the r, the u, and the t, they're all negative. So they all have to flip. Does my negative 1 fourth flip? No, just my exponents. So now I have negative 1 and the u to the negative 5 flips to the top. And then I have my 4 on the bottom. Sorry about that, little phone call. So um, we're going to move our r to the negative 5 down to the bottom. So that's going to be r to the 5th now. And move our t to the negative 3 to the bottom. So that now becomes t to the 3rd. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to have negative u to the 5th over 4r to the 5th t to the third. Negative u to the fifth over 4r to the fifth t to the third. And that is example number 4b on page 411, if you'd like to take a look at that as well. Okay, so that completes um, dividing monomials. We'll have a, a practice workbook day on Thursday and then quiz on multiplying and dividing on Friday. We'll see you in the morning.